Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this will be my shortest video ever, I think. Um, N64 power supply. It's one of these ones that's got the little comparator board here, um, which you know uses these opto couplers um, to disable, you know, the output if the reference voltages and things are not right, you know. And that's what's happening. This bloody thing here is shutting it down. So it's like you know, you get 3.4 volts and then nothing. 3.4, nothing. 3.4, nothing. It's probably about every. Oh, Three or two or three hundred milliseconds, it does it. It's just really annoying because you can't measure anything to understand what that was going on. Because this this is shutting the, the damn thing down. You can see I did solder there to try and disable the shutdown process, but I still couldn't get anywhere with it. And that chip there's misaligned because I was just uh, uh, this was the nearest thing available the other day when I want to do some SMD solder and I want to just test the uh, airflow on the. Um, hot air rework station there and I thought I'll just quickly just heat that chip just to see you know when the solder melts uh, so I need to put that back on there if I'm going to keep that board um, but I'm just going to use it as scrap now these these boards it's just I can't be bothered with it I've spent that much time messing with it and you can buy a replacement N64 power supply like a you know a cheap Chinese one off eBay for about seven or eight pounds so it really just wasn't worth the effort you know the main switching transistor on one of these is about two or three quid uh, you might be able to buy them cheaper if you buy them direct from you know uh, electronics uh, you know place but like off eBay prices you'll pay two or three quid maybe even four quid for a bloody switching transistor for one of these um, so you can see what I've done here um, I had this I'll show you this first I had an old um, 12 volt power supply that used to I used to use this for my dehumidifier it's just 12 volts uh, 3 amp and this had packed in um, now I thought it'd be the capacitors so I took it to pieces recapped it and lo and behold the LED came back on again and it's got output in nice clean 12.3 volts so I've got a 12 volt power supply um, now the Nintendo 64 PSU I forgot where the marking is now it's on the front here as you can see it needs 3.3 volts at 2.7 amps and 12 volts at 0.8 of an amp and it can be pretty hard trying to find a solution for that 3.3 volts you know I did look around for different sort of LDO regulators and things like that um, and it, the 2.7 amps is the issue you can get loads of regulators in this sort of 1 to 2 amps range um, and then you're going to have heat problems and all the rest of it so I thought well actually I've not, not tried one of these before let's try a DC to DC converter so this was about £5 uh, off eBay um, you can probably buy them cheaper if you buy them you know, from a proper electronics uh, company or something or from, import them from China or something but anyway um, 12 volts in 3.3 volts out and as you can see there hopefully um, 3 amps it'll provide um, now I've tested this left it on for 20 minutes played a bit of uh, well a few games on the N64 works ok um, and then turned the lid off felt it stone cold absolutely stone cold generates no heat whatsoever um, so what I've got here is this, this 12 volt power supply is powering it you know I've got 12 volts coming in um, 12 volts goes into the, the, the DC to DC converter here to drop down to the yellow wire which is 3.3 and then I've also split the 12 volts that's coming in and taken it straight to the connector and then I've just got a cap the larger cap is on the 3.3 volt rail because that's the one that's used for all the logic and stuff I think it's only 470 you could perhaps do with like a you know a 1000 or 2200 but I've tested it and it works really well it's reliable so I think that's okay um, and on the 12 volt line there it only uses a few hundred milliamps at most even though it's rated up to 0.8 of an amp um, so I've just got a uh, 220 microfarad cap on the 12 volt rail um, so it really is just a case of just put the lid in and this is done um, so yeah I mean it would have been cheaper to have bought you know a replacement what the seven quid eight quid or something off eBay um, but this is cool now um, doesn't generate any heat whatsoever and if anything actually I've mentioned the voltages on these and um, because this is just the, the 12 volts is just above 12 volts it's like 12.3 it outputs about just over 3.25 volts so it's not 3.3 it's just about 0.5 of a volt below um, 0 0.05 volts below um, you know the 3.3 volt line uh, level so um, as a result it probably make the N64 run a bit cooler anyway because it's not outputting 3.4 or 3.5 which is sometimes what you get on some of these N64 power supplies so you can see the 12 volt power supply there powering the uh, thing at the back uh, point the screen as you can see it's working fine it's been on for a good half hour here no problems at all not sure how safe it is um, that is one thing that does worry me you know what happens if the DC to DC converter fails are we going to get 12 volts on the 3.3 volt line um, but like I say I've temperature tested it it's stone cold and I think that's because I've just been reading online and apparently the 3.3 volt line where you've got um, you know the memory expansion in there pulls about 2 at 1.3 amp 
So it's not pull anywhere near the three amps that this thing's uh, you know DC to DC converters rated. Um, they barely get warm anyway, even when they are you know running up to capacity. Um, so I think it should be all right. Post some comments down below uh, your thoughts and you know what you think uh, risks and things are with something like that. Um, or what you know whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. Anyway, I thought you'd find it interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Gadget UK here again. This time I'm looking at um, an N64 power supply. Uh, we'll just have a look at the uh, part number and stuff under there. So it's saying 3.3 .3 volts, um, 2.7 amps. God, that's pretty beefy. Um, 12 volts, so 0.8 of an amp. Um, you can see, you know, it slides into the back of the N64. That's the way these work. And you've got this six pin connector here at the back. So, um, oh, it's even marked on there. Look at that, that's handy. Um, I was going to say I'll just go away and find the pin outs, but it's printed on there. So I'll measure um, the voltages there and we'll see what we're getting out of it. These three pins here are ground, and then you've got plus 3.3 um, .3 there, um, and uh, plus 12 on that bottom pin. Um, and you can do this just by sticking, because they're quite thin, the little um, contacts inside, just stick your component leg in there, you know, and you can get uh, a connection there. And I've just done that, on, you know, using both, obviously. Um, and there's nothing, it's just nothing coming out of this at all. So I think before I do anything, I'll check the fuse in the mains plug. The fuse is okay. So to get in here, it looks like, uh, yeah, it's the same security bit that you can use to get inside an N64 um, or a Super Nintendo. Um, this will work on Mega Drive carts and things as well, actually, the same size. Once you've got those two screws out the back, just clips straight off really easily, and then this board comes out upside down. It comes up that facing you that way, actually. Be careful not to touch um, the underneath of the cap there, that 400 volt cap, or anywhere around the underneath of this PCB, because you will get a belt off that if you're not careful. So just checking the uh, main smoothing cap there, that big beefy one. Um, yeah, that's, there's no voltage in there, so I'm not going to get a massive belt or anything off that. That's good. So it's not what I expected at all. This is a you know a miniature um, switch mode power supply. So I mean I'll check the obvious things. I'll check the uh, switching transistor there, and there should be some sort of uh, there's going to be a resistor. Might even be the same problem that's uh, that occurred on my uh, Zydec power supply, where the, the the feed into that transformer there's gone. I'll have to measure around anyway, see what I can find. If you saw my recent Amiga Zydec power supply repair, you'll know that I fixed that one really quick. It was in like literally two minutes after getting the lid off. I found the faulty component, then thought mm, I better check the SCR out, and it was the SCR, and lo and behold, it was working. So it was like, all in all, it was like, a, in total, start to end, it was like a 10 minute repair. This one, I spent a couple of hours on yesterday, uh, I kid you not. Um, I've been all around the house on this one, I seriously have. So this is the following day. Yesterday I spent about an hour and a half, actually, um, that I've not shown, um, looking at this. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm worst enemy, really. I didn't follow my uh, own advice and just jumped right in at the wrong point and you know you should always start with the basics what I should have done is measured the voltage on the switching transistor and instead what I did is I jumped onto this board here uh, when it was in place and sit you there and measured the um, opto couplers now on this side here uh, let's give it a little pointy, pointy device make it a bit easier on this side here um, on this top one, I was on the second pin down, I was measuring 3.3 .3 volts, and I thought, oh, we've got 3.3 .3 volts. Second one down here, um, nothing, zero. I thought, oh, maybe we're lacking the 12 volts. So I then went away and started looking at the secondary side of this, the output side, um, in particular the component down here. It's marked Q something on the board. It like, looks like it's a transistor de designation in terms of the actual board marking but I'm sure it's actually not a transistor. Um, I'll show you the component I took off, and it's marked uh, N4218, and it's kind of a square, so the focus doesn't look very clever on this camera this morning, I don't know why. Um, it's kind of like a square um, type component, you know, a rectangular, it's, got a, you know, it's not got the semicircled back. Um, now, measuring that, I can measure two, what look like Scotty diodes, you know, um, across two of the pins, which is, you know, correct regards it being a transistor of some some type. But then there's also a reading between, two, you know, uh, two more pins on there as well, which 
I'll show you that in a minute. I can't make any sense of it. Can't find any part number. You know, I can't find anything on the part number. Can't find an equivalent. Um, it's all a little bit strange. Why is the focus not working on this? Yeah, hopefully that's focusing. Um, so that was where I started looking. You know, something wrong with the 12 volts. Measuring down here, um, there's a little zener. There was minus 2.5 volts on one side, but the other. Two, two of the pins on this little, what I suspect was a transistor, it just, there was nothing. So I couldn't make any sense of it, and I did numerous things. I took some of the caps off to make sure they weren't pulling it down. The fuses here are obviously okay, that's one of the first things I checked. Then I thought, oh, you know, I better check the main input fuse. Well, it wouldn't be relevant, because you wouldn't have 3.3 if the, the, well, you'll see what I mean in a minute, it gets confusing. You wouldn't think there'd be 3.3 if that fuse was blown. Um, and it's okay, it's not that fuse. And you would also think there was no 3.3 if the switching transistor was uh, blown. You know, if there was the switching transistor wasn't switching, you wouldn't expect to see 3.3 volts over here. Um, well, the strange thing is, if you measure, well, when it was in circuit, the three contacts here, where the transistor was, there was, you know, a couple of diodes, diodes between two, two pins and then between the other two, which indicate to me that the transistor was okay. You know, there were no shorts, because that was the first thing I was thinking, maybe, you know, we had a short and it blown fuse, etc. But no, that wasn't the case. That transistor was measuring fine in circuit. Now, there are two more contacts here that go to this, which is a thermal switch. I think it's marked 117 degrees C, and that goes on the back of the transistor heat sink. As you can see, you know, one component goes on one side, and the transistor goes on that side in the cavity, and on the other side goes the, the thermal switch. So the idea being, if it gets to 117 degrees, it goes open circuit. Um, and that's the way it measures. You know, If you measure it now, it's a short circuit, that's correct. And it's feeding one of the pins here of this transistor. Um, so it's quite clever, the way they've done that. It's just an extra safety protection. That if the transistor shorts and gets too hot, after a, you know, a very short period of time, it'll go open circuit and it'll, it will cut the feed to the uh, heat sink. It must be perhaps the uh, collector or something going into... Um, that uh, transistor but anyway yeah so it, it measured okay but then I thought well let's just check the voltage and of course put my meter on I had 337 volts on this pin here nothing nothing I thought oh god you know it's the bloody transistor but then coming back to this board and measuring here sorry second pin down there 3.3 volts how the hell could I get 3.3 volts out when it's not even switching I don't know. I think it was switching, but I think it was switching at such a low... I, I don't know. I, I'm saying I think it was switching, but I was measuring it and it was zero volts. There was only one pin that had 337 volts on it. The other two were completely zero. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't, know, how that, I don't know how that could it possibly be creating 3.3 volts. There wasn't the caps, because these have all been taken off and discharged. And, and it was the level was going up and down if you measured on here it wasn't sort of staying at 3.3 it was going to sort of 3.3 3.4 3.5 back down to 3.3 so it, it's very 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 odd um, so anyway I've ordered a replacement transistor I'll show you that in a minute we'll measure it but there's only a single diode uh, between a couple of the pins on there that's it so one side of that has gone um, I also took off one of these um, right at the start um, because I was convinced uh, that one of these were faulty because of the readings I was getting when I was putting a meter on there. It's just the way the wired in the board, what, you know, the, the, there's got different resistors and things leading into them and you get different resistance. If you start trying to re read resistance mode across there, you're not going to get the same thing, which is sort of logical really, because I think that if this one's going to be related to the 12 volt line, you're going to have different uh, resistor sizes and things in there. Um, anyway, and that leads me on to the next part. I thought, oh, I'll test one of these on my breadboard, you know, um, and I got my power supply rigged up here, and actually this is not the same power supply you've seen it, well it is, it's the same model. You can tell it's not got the mark here, it's not got the ink worn off, this is the other one I got out the loft, so I've recently read on that power supply as well. But anyway, sidestepping aside, um, I got one of these optos onto my breadboard power supply at 2 volts, um, I put a resistor in there that I thought was 4K7, didn't check it properly and it was 4.7 ohms, and uh, switched it on, lo and behold, <laughs> magic smoke escaped out of the thing so this has got a different opto on it um, I'll perhaps show that in a later video testing components and things it's something I want to do at some point but I wanted to remind myself how to test one of these and you just have to the right the right size resistor based on your voltage that you're feeding in and I think it's like a diode you know an LED on one side and the other side is some sort of optical thing and that was what I couldn't remember I couldn't remember I was interested to see what you get on this side 
when you power this side with maybe a few volts, you know, with a, I don't know, a 4K, 7 or a 10K resistor in, in series, to see what actually happens on this side. And that was what I was trying to do. And I was going to try and demonstrate that, but I fried, fried the opto. So I've got an opto here from an old faulty power supply that I've borrowed. Um, and that's okay. It measured, well, the, the, the side with the uh, emitter, you know, the optical um, part is measuring as a diode, just the same as the other one, same sort of value. So I think that'll be okay. I've got some spares of these ordered anyway, just in case one of those is faulty. But I don't think they've got anything to do with it. Well, I know they haven't now, it's just a switching transistor. Um, but the other thing is, when I removed this, this transistor down here, uh, I'll show you in a minute, it measures really strangely. Put this on top. So I know there's a little bit of a glare there. It's not that important, I don't think, to see the exact reading. I'll try and do this with hands I've got. So you see we've got 0.905. Straight away I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that reads like a diode. Um, nothing between those two. And then if I swap them around like that, you'll see this is the strange reading. You see that, 1.5. And then between the middle pin, we've got a diode reading again. So we've got three lots of readings, but that one there, from the pin 1 to pin 3 with pin 1 on the plus there, 1.506, what the hell's going on there? I don't know, I'm wondering if that's like an SCR or something similar. Um, yeah, it's marked N4218, I think. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, N N4218. If you've got any ideas about that, please let me know. It is marked Q on the board as the component, you're like Q20 something. And pin one's marked as E on the board, as if it's an emitter. So, I don't know, it's very, very, very strange. But I think, based on what I've seen with the switching transistor, and I'll show you that now, I'm going to get that component back in there, and we'll just try it with a new switching transistor. I think it's a red herring. I think the strange reading I'm getting is because of my lack of clarity on what kind of component it actually is. Um, and I don't think there's going to be a relationship between the failure of these. You see, look, there you go, one reading that that way there, hang on. In fact, that's not reading now, what's going on here? Not reading at all. Try it again. Yeah, I've got a diode reading there. Nothing, nothing. You've just seen me do it the other way around. So we've just got a single diode in there, and um, the other side of that transistor is faulty. Um, anyway, I'll... I'll just show you something else actually on this PCB. Um, I'm not sure what close I'm going to be able to get without blurring, but I did spend some time going through some of the components on here. There's lots of zero ohm links, they're like green, you can see there. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if you had a fault on one of these where certain aspects are not working, you know, a voltage has died or it's completely dead. You may have one of these that's blown these zero ohm links, the green. Um, there are also some components that have got like, I don't know, the numbers and letters on that, but it says 2B, it's actually a diode. There's another one down here, um, crooked on the board there. Um, 1B or something, that's a diode. Um, I'm not sure what these are. I don't you can see it's like a six pin little chip. Um, it's marked 5H. I don't know if it's logic, is it an OR gate or something? I don't know. Uh, if you know more, post in the comments below. Um, and then we've got that little chip there that I've not looked up yet either. Let me just see what that is. Yeah, it's marked ST3936. ST3936 and then underneath it says 644 so I'm not sure what that is, is that a, a 393 like a, some sort of comparator or something? You'd think so, in the position on the board it's on um, and then just a few transistors so anyway, um, I'll straighten up the pins on that um, reassemble it, wait for the transistor to come and I'll show you once it's all reassembled so the replacement transistors arrive so the replacement transistor's arrived here, it's a 2SK1460, uh, this is an equivalent for the uh, 2SK2700. Um, you can see it's had a bit of uh, thermal compound on the back there, so I'll get some fresh thermal compound um, on both sides of this uh, heatsink here. Um, there's no ice, you know, it's isolated this, so you don't need to worry about that. That's one thing to check if you use an equivalent, you know, make sure it's the same type of uh, package body and stuff, you know, it's got the same... Uh, plastic or ceramic uh, package there, whatever it is. Some of them, you know, can have a metal um, back, um, which you don't want going to your heat sink. Um, 